In this video, I'll demonstrate VM replication with PHD Virtual Backup, including how to configure replication in your environment, and how to replicate virtual machines from one location to another. For this demo, I'm going to use two separate data centers, both managed by a single vCenter server. I'll replicate some of the VMs here in my main data center to my disaster recovery data center here. To accomplish this, I deployed a second VBA to my DR location. I'll use that VBA to perform the actual replication. And since I'm already using PHD Virtual Backup to protect the machines at my primary site, I can take advantage of those existing backups to create my replicas. Before configuring the replication VBA, since my backups are stored on my primary VBA's attached disk, I'll need to make sure that disk is enabled for use with replication. On the Connectors tab, I can see that I've enabled the share. If you're using a SIFS or NFS share to store your backups, there's no need to enable this option. Now that my backup storage is enabled for replication, I'll select the VBA at my DR site. From here, I can add backup storage locations to use with replication. I'll click Discover to automatically locate any available PHD VBA data stores. I'll select my primary VBA's attached disk storage here. I can add as many backup data stores as needed, including any of the supported storage types, including SIFs, NFS, or attached virtual disks. I'll click Save, then Reboot the VBA. When the VBA is finished rebooting, I'll head over to the replication area to view all of the VMs available for replication. Here I can see the VMs from the backup store I added. Each of these VMs are backed up nightly by my primary VBA. For this demonstration, I'll select two VMs that I want to replicate to my DR site nightly. After selecting the VMs, I'll click Replicate. In the Replication Wizard, I can give the job a name, then enter some default values for the replica VMs. I'll select to append Replica to the name of the replicated VMs, then I'll select the storage they should be created on, as well as the network settings to use. These are the storage and network settings available at my DR location. I'll click Next, then define a schedule for this replication job. I want to replicate these VMs every night after my backups have been completed to ensure I have the most up-to-date data each day. I'll select a daily job, then set the time for midnight, since I know my backups are usually completed well before then. On the View Edit VM Settings step, I can change individual VM or virtual disk settings by clicking within the table. I'm going to keep the default settings I chose, then click Submit. The job is created and appears in the Jobs area of the console. To make sure everything is working as expected, I'll kick off this job right away. If I open vSphere Client again, I can see the replica VMs have been created in my DR data center. And after this initial replication completes, only changed data will be replicated each night when my replication job runs. When the job is finished, I can head over to the replication area of the console again to see these VMs in the Replicated Virtual Machines tab. From here, I have the option to test the replicas or to fail over to a replica in the event of a disaster. That completes the steps required for configuring and using VM replication with PHD Virtual Backup for VMware vSphere. Thanks for watching. For additional information about PHD Virtual Backup, visit the PhD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.